Hello, welcome back to the Fish Locker. We're going to talk about crab pots. Now, any of you that watch my older videos, I only really had two or three pots, so I just had them in a really short stream. This year, I've been making quite a few more over the winter, and I have purchased some ex-commercial pots. So I'm going to fish them side by side to see which catch best. My pots, my homemade ones, which are this design, or the commercial, these are medley pots, medley soft eyed pots. And I'm going to explain how I run them in a string or in a fleet. Now, these pots that I make, they are slightly buoyant, so you have to add weights to them. Like you see there, I have steel weights in the bottom because the base is made of wood and it's made of plastic pipe. These steel ones, these are very heavy anyway, which is why I put a steel one on each end. This end, I'll talk about actually, I'll talk about the spinners first. On each pot, you can see I have a bridle, and this is what we call a spinner. And you connect it just simply by running a rope through, which is on a leg, and you tie a knot in the end. So that in the current, if this if this pot gets picked up, it will spin on this spinner and it won't tangle up your main rope. Between each pot, I have 40 feet of rope. Straight into the end, I have a heavy pot, and then 40 feet down, I've just spliced in a little leg. And then another 40 feet, and I have another leg to another pot, and then another 40 feet, and I have a leg to the final pot. Now, all these knots are, they're just really simple. I just have my rope through my spinner, I've tied a knot in the end, and it's just a double overhand knot. So you just go through twice. And all it does is it creates a big knot, so that it will butt up against the spinner, and it's a knot that although it will tighten, it is quite easy to undo. So when you come to taking your fleet apart, you can just untie the knot. These will be generally set in around about 30 to 50 feet of water. The reason I don't want to set them any deeper is because I'm going to be hauling them by hand. If you've got them in 200 feet of water and you're hauling by hand, even if you've got your pots 50 feet apart, at some point in time you will have all four pots up in the water and hauling them by hand is hard work. What I have is after my last pot is I have a few feet of rope and an ice place. This is in case if I'm fishing in an area that's got a lot of tide. What you can do is you can take a dump weight and if you've got just an ice place in it you can add a weight like that so that not only does it give your pots more weight to sit on the seabed I then have 50 feet of rope to an eye this is where you attach your buoy or your float. Because I'm going to be fishing in 30 feet, generally you'll use two times the depth of water for your float rope, for your buoy rope or dan rope. The reason being is if when the tide's running and hitting against the rope, it will pull it at an angle. The same as when you're anchoring your boat. If you're in 100 feet of water, you can't use 100 feet of rope. You need 200 to 300 feet. If I'm going to be fishing in deeper water, that's why I have an ice place. Because if I'm going to move from using 50 feet of water to 150 feet, I will just add another length of rope. One of the reasons that you also use twice the depth or up to three times the depth is because of the effect of the tide on the rope. Now, it's a double-edged sword in that you want to make the rope as small a diameter as possible so it has less tide effect on it. But also, if you make it too small, then you can't haul it by hand, because you just end up cutting it into your hand. So anything less than, say, 9mm, this is 10mm. Any less than 9mm, when you're pulling it, the rope cuts into your hands. The reason I have an ice place on there is because it's the easiest way just to bend on a float or to bend on an extra length of rope. Like there, all I'll do is I'll take a rope through, 
and then make a ball in and it's it's just as simple to put on an extra length and take the length off if you had a full length there if you had if you had extra 200 feet of rope and it was all in one piece you would have to make a big coil and tie it which holds a lot of tight that isn't too much of a problem but this I've found is just an easier method and if you want to take it off all you'll undo is you'll just untie your knot and then add a piece or take away a piece I will show this in action on the boat but like I say when I'm hand hauling I won't have any more than four possibly five if I'm using a couple more lighter pots I couldn't do a full fleet of five commercial pots just because it would be too heavy to haul by hand in deeper water but I'll usually fish mine in say 60 feet and in fleets of four the main thing when you're working pots I hope you can hear me is preparation because you don't want to have everything in a big tangle as you're shooting the pots away I hope you can see here I have each pot coiled up so first second third fourth and on top of every pot there is the coil of rope that goes with that pot so we'll have one and then 50 feet and then another and then 50 feet all the way through until we get to the end and then right at the end we have the floats you want to be steaming along if you've got more than one that is if you want to be steaming along at a steady pace not fast because it'll just be going too fast and if you get tangled you're in trouble so just steam along a knot, two knots maybe, and then let them go off so that your pots are stretched out. I'm just going to double around and then I'll try and show you. Weather's not great, so I've just had to haul the pots real quick, and now that I've come in here, I can show you what's in them. The area of rough ground that I had them in was really rough. You can tell because the pots are full of bullets. First pot, female spider crab, and a very dark little dogfish. Second one, one of my homemade ones. A lovely spotted little bullus. And it's full of edible crabs, look. None of these are size, they're all a bit too small, they'll all go back, all the way down to little baby ones.
This one's got a bruiser of a crab in it. Got a massive great cock crab. Let's see if I can get him out before the battery dies. Yeah, you can see behind me that the weather's not great. And it's getting worse, so it turned really quickly. It was a lovely day yesterday. So I've got to bring the bring the pots in real quick. Look at the size of that one. That's a proper size crab, isn't it? He's coming home with me. Another slightly smaller male. Come on out, you come. You're not doing yourself any favours by staying in there. There we go. And a few starfish. This one here. This one's really done the business. We have a big lobster. But as you can see, this one here is carrying eggs. I don't know how well you can see these eggs here, but they're black and red. That means they're just about to hatch. And it's illegal to land a buried head, a buried female lobster in Cornwall. So I'm going to put this one down and I'm going to release it over there. But also in this pot, there's a load more little edible crabs. And an angry female velvet. This one, I don't know how well you can see it. It's full of bullos. There's one of them. Hey, look. And here's a second one. A lovely sandy brown one, that one, isn't it? You can tell it's a bullos rather than a dogfish because of them big nasal flaps. And again, nice crabs. It's a female this one. Yeah that will show you the difference. This one is a male so it has a narrow flap underneath. This one is a female so it has a wide flap underneath. This perfectly shows you the two poses that crabs take. It's either an aggressive pose where it holds its claws out like that. Look defensive pose where they wrap up to protect themselves. Fantastic success. For a massive great cock crab there. Big male. And a lovely lobster to look at. Now she is going to go back. As soon as I get the pot sorted we'll let her go. He's coming for dinner. Amazing, eh? You can see there is the next generation of lobsters right there. There's a bylaw in Cornwall protecting lobsters carrying eggs. So enjoy yourself, little lady. <laughs>